explain um, to our meeting in regards to improvements at the intersection of W.J. Bowles and Bowman Roberts. First of all, I would like to do introductions real briefly. My name is Lisette Acevedo. I am the engineer manager over the mobility infrastructure team with Transportation and Public Works um, with the City of Fort Worth. We also have with us Lauren Pruer. She's our assistant director over capital delivery. And also Martin Phillips is our senior capital projects officer. And uh, Jeff Allen, he's our public communication specialist who um, makes sure that we get all our meetings scheduled. Um, and we appreciate very much his help. And uh, Shweta Rao, who's our project manager for the project. So welcome you. And um, we would like to briefly um, uh, give Council Member Flores an opportunity if he wants to um, address the group. Councilman Flores. Okay, well, we're gonna continue with our presentation. So tonight's agenda, we are going to briefly uh, just touch base on uh, some of the concerns that were raised at our previous public meeting that we held about a month ago. And then after that, we're gonna go right into our presentation. Some of the concerns that we received from uh, the previous attendees of our meeting um, were regarding uh, Bauman Roberts and uh, what was Bauman Roberts not part of uh, the, the streets that are listed. And then to the Councilman Flores, do, do you want to speak uh, and uh, address a group? Oh, no, I, I'll just say this briefly, just introductory comments again, Councilman Flores, uh, Carlos Flores, glad to be here with y'all. Uh, thank you to TPW staff for giving you this relevant information uh, regarding uh, this project. So please continue, Lisette. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, we we visited with staff um, and Bauman Roberts is um, not appropriate to add to the NTP because of the proximity that it has to other tour affairs that are currently in the NTP, such as Hoffines Boulevard and Buckle Road. Usually um, main arterials are about uh, a mile uh, apart. Also, the projected volumes for Bama Roberts are fairly low compared to an arterial. Currently, the roadway has about 3,600 vehicles a day. Also, the right of way for Bama Roberts is right at 60 feet, and arterials require a minimum of um, 80 to 130 feet of dedicated right of way. So, this roadway will uh, has quite a bit of properties that are really close to the edge of the road. Will will make it very prohibitive to. Um, acquire right away and impact a lot of properties to be able to um, turn this roadway into an arterial roadway. Can crosswalks and sidewalks be installed at this intersection? So we have visited with our consultant, uh, Donaway and Associates, who are also on the line, and we're evaluating the design of the intersection to uh, be able to make these changes. Next slide. Are there any future software projects anticipated in this area? Well, currently transportation management is evaluating the development of the sidewalk program for the 2022 bond, which is in the very early stages. We just began the our public, you know, uh, involvement uh, phase with that, and are in the process of having uh, some community meetings and um, as a part of the town county a call for projects that is going to uh, be taking place now in April. But for more information regarding um, you know, sidewalk requests or safe route to school requests, um, please contact Chelsea San Luis for additional information and we can provide her email address and her phone number after that. I apologize that we didn't have that here on the slide. What measures can be taken to improve the curve on the 5700 block of Bowman Roberts? So transportation management is in the process of evaluating alternatives to improve the safety at that location. Um, possible options could be, you know, enhancing, you know, markings with uh, reflectorized, uh, you know, markers, uh, add additional warning signs, perhaps, you know, um, trim the vegetation and um, possibly a straight light. Next slide. Um, so there was there was questions regarding why uh, we were doing an interim improvement project at the intersection uh, instead of a permanent solution uh, at this point. So this project is part of our intersection improvement program, 
that we have at the city that we um, have for the city wide to improve intersections um, capacity and safety. And a lot of these improvements are in room until a permanent solution that is more cost um, uh, prohibited can be uh, implemented. So this is um, for safety to improve site distance and operations uh, at the intersection until the ultimate uh, configuration of WJ bows can be implemented. Next slide. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Shreda. She's going to go over the presentation about the project. And if you guys can just hold your questions until the end or input them in the chat box, we will be able to get to those at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Lisette. Um, good evening, everyone. This is Shweta, and I would like to go over the presentation from here. And um, it's similar to the last presentation, but we have added a few more details to it based on the comments that we received in our previous public meeting. So this is the pro this slide shows the project location of the intersection improvements. It's at WJ Bose Road at Bowman Roberts Road. So it's between uh, major arterials like Boat Club Road, Bailey Boswell Road, Cromwell Marine Creek, and Old Decatur Marine Creek Parkway. Right. So coming to the project background, this location was selected for intersection improvements based on its unsafe geometry. We have a skewed geometry at this location that restricts the site distance and creates unsafe conditions for uh, travel and uh, it has resulted into multiple crashes, unsafe speeding. So we wanted to do some improvements that would make this uh, intersection a safer, uh, safer to maneuver. So the major project goal for this was to improve safety and traffic flow at the intersection. And a mini roundabout has been selected to meet these project goals. Uh, and we will also be including some roadway paving and drainage improvements as a part of this project. This project is funded by 2014 bond program and estimated construction cost for this project is around 500,000. <coughs> so this uh, is the current geometry of the intersection. We could see that it's a completely skewed intersection. You can't. Shwara, are you still there? I think we lost sound. Shwara, can you still hear us? You gonna listen to that? No. So, do you have a copy of the presentation? I sure don't. But let me email her real quick. I apologize, guys. We, she's obviously having some technical difficulties. Just hang on with us. She's signing back on right now. Sorry, everyone, I just lost my internet for a moment. I'm back again. Um, so yes, so this is the proposed improvement for the location where we will be installing uh, 94 feet diameter mini roundabout. And this would alleviate, uh, alleviate the site distance issues and it will also reduce the speeds at the intersection that would enhance more safety to both pedestrians as well as the drivers uh, who uh, go around this intersection. We will also be uh, improving the drainage improvements on all the corners of the intersection. So coming to why a roundabout was selected for this location. So considering the geometry of the intersection, it was considered that the roundabout would be best uh, would be the best option for this uh, intersection considering the right of way that we have, and also considering the fact that the roundabout is the safest at grade intersection type, because um, 
we would have the traffic flowing in a unique directional flow and we would not have to like look at multiple directions before maneuvering the intersection and it would operate more efficiently under higher traffic volumes when compared to a traffic signal and it generally has a lower life cycle cost um, that considering the maintenance of the traffic signal considering maintenance of traffic lights um, the uh, maintenance cost for the pet signals and everything roundabout save uh, quite a bit of money while considering the life cycle cost of the project. Again, we did a traffic analysis to compare both traffic signals as well as roundabout for this location. And we found out that though the traffic signal would improve the operations during peak hours, it might cause delay for certain traffic movements like the left hand lanes. So if we have permitted left hand lanes for traffic going northbound and coming southbound, so uh, it would cause delays when we just have a single lane operating for both uh, through traffic as well as the left hand lanes. And roundabout would be more efficient in this location because it won't be causing any delays for those traffic movements. And signal will not improve the intersection safety because it will not, it will not alleviate the unsafe speeding um, of the vehicles at the location. So considering the safety, we had 11 crashes at this intersection in the last three years due to speeding and unsafe geometry. So the roundabout would be the best solution to address all the issues regarding the speeding as well as the unsafe geometry, because it would be reducing the speeding uh, it will reduce the speeds of the vehicles when it, the vehicle approaches the intersection to less than 25 miles per hour. And it will also increase the visibility and it will also reduce the conflict points that a vehicle has at an intersection. So generally for a signalized intersection, we have around 28 to 32 conflict points, whereas for a roundabout it's 18. And we will be converting a two-way stop control intersection to a roundabout, so we would be reducing the number of injury crashes at the roundup, uh, intersection too. Um, so this is something that we added in addition to our uh, public, uh, the presentation that we had the last time was the turn templates for the school buses, just to show on how a school bus would maneuver a mini roundabout at this location. So, as you can see, the path over here, uh, it shows, pink one shows the front wheel track, uh, um, the front wheel track and the green one shows the real wheel track. And this is how a large vehicle or a bus coming from um, eastbound, uh, westbound WJ bus road would maneuver a uh, mini roundabout. Similar for a vehicle coming southbound on the Bowman Roberts Road. So this template shows on how a vehicle coming northbound on Bowman Roberts Road is going to maneuver the mini roundabout, and how a vehicle coming eastbound on WJ Bowes Road would maneuver a mini roundabout. This slide shows on vehicle turning um, north from coming uh, eastbound from WJ Bowes Road and a vehicle turning west coming south of Bowman Robert Road. And this one shows a vehicle turning uh, eastbound on coming north on Bowman Robert Road and also vehicle going southbound coming west from WJ Bowes Road. So coming to the project schedule, we will be uh, issuing a task order for our FAIN group to complete the construction on this project. And we are anticipating the start of construction late spring 2021. And the estimated duration for construction would be five months. So uh, executing the contract with the contractor might take around a month. So we anticipate starting construction sometime later next month. So that is all I have. Please let me know if you have any questions.
and we will be happy to address them. I have some questions. Uh, my name is Ryan Smith. I'm with the Northwest Alliance. Was anything changed uh, after the meeting with the design? Uh, your last meeting with the design? I'll take that question. Yes, we're currently um, we we evaluated adding uh, you know sidewalks and and ramps at the mini roundabout. So we are in the process of. Um, Determining, you know, how to make all that work. Um, so we are uh, revising the design and coordinating with Stonewater to make sure that we can add those improvements uh, to the mini roundabout. Uh, and then, in addition to that, we um, communicated with our transportation management folks, and they're going to be um, evaluating improvements, you know, for the curb of Amon Roberts. And um, they also are working on development of the um, future sidewalk program for the 2022 and evaluating this area um, as, as, as part of the evaluation process. But we did make some changes, um, but they're not final. That's why we didn't, um, you know, have them ready to be shown this evening, but so, uh, we're, we're making those changes. Yeah, we're gonna need additional funds, but. So when do you anticipate those, those changes being final? Because uh, just for example, um, we we had an alliance meeting last night for the district seven candidates, and one of the candidates lives in this area and actually spoke of this without us asking of it, and had and his kid has to walk in this area, and also alluded that the school district has to act, uh, have extra bus stops due to this problem, and I'm aware of that that the the school district has been in communication with the city for four years on this. So why is it taking you know, a, a meeting a few weeks ago for this to be addressed? You know, this is part of the 2014 bond package. This is 2021. So now you're telling us that the permanent prop, you know, fix on this is part of the 2022 bond package. When is that going to be complete? Is that 2026, 2028? You know, the the answers aren't you know aren't good enough right now. So. When can we expect a final final answer on the sidewalks? Um, I understand uh, the frustration and the concerns. Um, this particular project is for the intersection, and we are making uh, adjustments to provide the pedestrian accessibility at the intersection. The request for the sidewalks um, for the entire area, it's a much broader uh, issue. And um, I believe Chelsea San Luis is on the line. Perhaps she can add additional information on that. But you have no, there, I don't, you're still not providing an answer right now. How are kids going to get through this intersection? Yes, yes, sir. I, I did. We we have made changes to the design and we are going to be adding the sidewalks and the AD ramps around the intersection. So there it will there will be a connection at the intersection, but that the project does not expand to provide sidewalks for for long sections of, of, of roadway to connect to where the schools are at because this project is a, a small intersection project. And he doesn't have the budget to be able to make all those improvements. Um, so is is that are, is the but, are the changes going to be made with the sidewalks or with at least with something in the plan? Yes. That we're going to see in the next five months. Yes. 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 So 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 the plans are not fully finished. That's why I didn't want to show them this evening, but we are going to incorporate that into this project that is going to take place within the next five months. That's correct. But there are changes that are at the intersection itself. Should I think you, uh, well, and, and if I, I may, Lisette, I think it's important to note that while this is being funded with 2014 bond funds, this is being funded with residual bond funds. So it's not like this project is, is you know, late. It's um, we, we've completed uh, the, the intersection project from the 2014. We had some funding left over. We knew this was an extremely high priority. So we wanted to put in an interim improvement here. 
And then, you know, talking about the, the proposed 2022 bond. Um, so we've been having a, a few community meetings. We have one this Saturday at 10 a.m. Please go to our, our website for that information. Um, but WJ Boaz from Boat Club Road to Elkins School Road is proposed on the 2022 bond, and, and it is fairly high ranking. Now, obviously, at this point, there, there are no guarantees, um, but I can tell you right now that that project is ranking 5 out of 12. Um, we are pursuing Tarrant County bond funds, obviously, to, to leverage our funds so that we can do as many projects as possible. But that, that portion of, of Boaz uh, from Boat Club Road to Elkins School Road uh, would include those shared use paths, basically, we would be constructing it to the master thoroughfare plan cross section, which is a four lane divided thoroughfare. Um, so that would include curb, gutter, drainage, street lights, shared use paths. Um, and currently we're scheduled for that to be starting construction in the spring of 2025. Um, so this interim roundabout is actually rated for the next 10 years. Um, we, we feel confident that this this interim solution will perform for the next 10 years. However, you know, we intend to get to this before that with the 2022 bond program. Again, we're in very preliminary stages right now. Uh, those schedules could be better, um, but that's kind of what we're seeing right now just from a, a pre preliminary look. And Ryan, if I could, if I could jump in here, this is uh, Carlos Flores. Uh, Staff and I have been talking about it after the alliance meeting that you referred to. Uh, you know, these are uh, you know additions that we're looking at how to program in there, figuring out when the funds can align with the uh, with the main project. So it, it's not finalized. You are correct, but we are working on that. <clears throat> Carlos and staff, uh, you know, the last time we checked, Bowman Roberts is still not a part of the, your master thoroughfare plan. Is there? A possible way to get that fixed and, and, and why we've been asking that question for years and why it's not on the plan. Can we get that addressed? Ryan, your, your, your audio came out choppy and I did not hear the question. Uh, Lauren, did you hear uh, Ryan's question? My audio was choppy. So, yes, sir. So his question, and I believe um, Lissette addressed this in one of the, the first slides was basically why it is is Bowman Roberts not in arterial? So currently it's classified as a collector. Um, and, and I believe Lissette explained that far better than I could in terms of just, you know, how we plan for these things and in terms of their the distance between arterials. Uh, so that certainly plays into it. Uh, Lissette, could you go back to that slide if, if that's not too difficult? Yes. Um, Shara, can you go back to the slide where we address that comment about the, the street? Being uh, as an arterial chair, chair we're right away on the on the master thoroughfare. Okay, so after um, visiting with staff that um, are the ones who um, handle the the planning and the and the update of the MTP, this is information that we were able to gather that arterials are usually spaced about a mile apart, and there are roadways that are intended to carry ten thousand vehicles or more a day. Uh, four lane divided at least with uh, future expansion to six lanes. They uh, require uh, uh, 80 feet up to 130 feet of right of way. Um, and Bauman Roberts, you know, is a 60 foot, you know, uh, uh, right of way dedication with um, uh, low volumes, about 3,600, you know, uh, vehicles there through, uh, a day. And um, it's got quite a bit of uh, residential along there that is very close to the roadway and it will cost. Uh, it would be very prohibitive to take on, you know, additional right away from those properties to construct an arterial where there is uh, arterials already within the mile radius. So that's why Bauman Roberts, it's not in the NTP uh, currently. And, and it, it will not, it, and why it will not really meet the, the criteria for it to be added as an arterial to the NTP. <clears throat> Thanks for that. You know, Lauren, uh, I, I understand what you're saying about the residual uh, bond in 2014. It's just when we hear comments, even from candidates in District 7 last night that say you guys are so far behind in some of your bond projects, 
And then when we hear we're counting on 2022 again, for really to see the effects, full effects of this intersection to be improved, it's concerning. We feel like we're never going to see that. Um, we hope the city, you know, can can um, better manage those projects. So. Well, and I think that's a bit bit of misinformation, and I would encourage you to pay attention to, I believe it's the April sixth council session where we'll be giving kind of an update on the 2014 and 2018 bond, as well as briefing the 2022 bond. Um, so, you know, this year alone, we've got 56 projects going into construction. We have over 200 projects in the portfolio. Um, so from my perspective, and we, we measure things in, in terms of, you know, projects and construction, as well as um, funds expended. So we kind of look at it from, from two different angles. And, you know, I, I feel like we're tracking pretty well. Um, by May of 2022, we'll have about eight projects that haven't gone to construction yet. And those are for various reasons. You know, um, a lot of it has to do with just different permitting and, and right away requirements. Um, but those will be certainly be covered in those presentations. Okay. I have a question. So, um, how are they going to handle lane closures during the construction? Is that intersection going to be completely closed off or one lane at a time? Or how, how is that going to work? Um, we'll be working with the contractor. What our, our intent will be to wait until school is, um, is it's finished is, you know, it's out. To try to take advantage of uh, being able to do some like full closures so the contractor can work quicker. But um, most of the time, we have to maintain at least one lane open um, per direction. It's just that it's very narrow. This intersection is kind of a bit of, um, it's a little bit challenging. But we will like, uh, we will be communicating with the, with the public um, with uh, message boards and at least seven weeks, uh, seven to 10 days in advance before. You know, any lane closures, you know, will take place, but our intent is that, you know, we have a 5 month schedule, but if we can allow the contractor to have some full length, you know, full closures and some of those, uh, you know, 1 approach or 2 approach at a time, they could get a lot of work done real quick. Um, so, we would like to take advantage when the traffic is lighter when, you know, even though that the traffic is not as, uh, as, as, as heavy as it went with COVID because not all the students are doing in person. But there is quite a bit of students that are doing in person and buses traveling, et cetera. Once once school ends for the for the semester, you know, the first week in June, traffic will be much lighter and it will be advantage, it will be to our advantage we could do some uh routing, some detours to allow the contractor to be able to go out there and for you know for those two months to get a lot of work done. But we will be communicating with the residents, you know, uh in advance. Um and every time there's a traffic change, we will have to communicate that too. One last question. It looks like there's probably going to be probably several hundred houses built um, in an area of bows closer to Old Decatur. Is this roundabout going to be able to sustain that increased level of traffic? Because I know the light at um Old Decatur can't handle the traffic we have now. So, I mean, a lot of people might be coming, you know, back down towards this way, increasing the, the traffic here. Is that roundabout going to handle that amount of traffic, especially during rush hour? Uh, uh, the answer is yes. So, basically, what we did is that um, we apply some growth factors and look at a, a horizon year of 10 years on the road, taking into account the current uh, land use and the future growth in the area and we apply that factor and we'll look at a traffic and the, and the roundabout will be performing at a level service c or better for 10 years but like lauren mentioned we're we're, we're very hopeful that we're going to get there way before you know way ahead of 10 years with the wj bowles project and that geometry is going to be corrected and then you'll have your final intersection. 
uh, method, you know, mode of transportation, you know, um, whatever that is, it's a traditional intersection with a traffic signal. As you, as you just mentioned, traffic signals can, they're, they're predictable, people are used to them, but they, they get to a point where they just cannot handle any more traffic that what they can handle. So it gets to a point that after certain growth and you cannot make the intersection any larger, you start running into those queues and in those delays. Um, with the roundabout, you have more residual capacities. So that's the term that is used. You have more, more residual capacity means that it can handle more traffic for a longer period of time than with a signal. With a signal, you get to a point where you just gotta widen and widen and widen the intersection to allow for more right turns and more left turns. Well, it gets to the point where you cannot just continue to increase the size of the intersection. The roundabouts have the ability to handle growth for a much longer period of time until they get to a point where, you know, they will be like level service D or worse. So we're hoping that the mini roundabout is going to uh, reduce the speeds on WJ bus to a certain extent, you know, somewhat that is going to allow the buses to be able to make those turns, you know, in a safer manner and that um, we're going to be able to improve the site distance and then facilitate the traffic flow because it's just one direction of traffic uh, until we can get there with our with our larger project. Thank you, Lisette. Uh, looks like we have a few more questions in the chat box. The first one is, it looks like the center circle will be flat, allowing people to drive straight across. Seems like there will be steep learning curve for people. Are there any other mini roundabouts in the area? So the central circle won't be flat. It would be uh, mount, but it won't, it would be traversable, but it won't be flat, but it would still provide a barrier between the roadway, um, Basically, and that uh, it, it has a, a, a doom in the center that is transversible for large vehicles, like the fire, like a fire engine or um, a large, a large truck pulling a trailer. They could, they could navigate and, and uh, go over that doom. But for regular passenger vehicles or, you know, regular size pickups, it will be uncomfortable. So. That's the beauty, you know, that's the beauty of the mini roundabout that it provides you that effect, such a, a large roundabout, but you know, whenever you have tight space, it still gives that option for like a like a fire engine or a large truck trying to pull up a trailer that they could transverse the doom if they needed to, because they needed more space. But it's a it's a tight kind of intersection. So there was not really a way for us to install a larger roundabout without taking a lot of property. And since it's an interim condition, um, you know, we want to wait until the large project comes in the future to to get those larger, you know, to get that right away acquired. My chatbot is, is not working, guys, so I cannot, I try to answer the NTP question and it's just not doing anything. So I cannot see the questions and I cannot type on my chat box. So um, I apologize about that. No problem, this said. The next question is, will the intersection be closed at any point? So we just answered this question. The last question that we have is, will the lighting at the intersection be modified? So yes, we are installing some street lights at this location. So it would be much brighter now and it would provide more uh, illumination during night. That's all the questions that we have in chat box. Do we have any more questions? If I can ask, I just wondered, I, I Googled many roundabouts and I saw some interesting things in the UK, but I've not seen comparables here. Are there any many roundabouts like this in the area? Or is this gonna be relatively new? I believe that this mini roundabout is going to be like one of the very first ones here in our area, but there are quite a few mini roundabouts throughout the country. I have Jay Van Housen on the line. Jay, can you add additional uh, information about that? Yeah, sure, Lisette. Can you hear me okay? We sure can. Great. Good. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm a, one of the consultants that works for the city of Fort Worth and uh, throughout the years have, have kind of been helping with um, roundabouts and other things. but 
Yeah, to answer your question, uh, Mr. Townsend, uh, the, the probably the closest mini roundabout that City of Fort Worth has would be over at Folk and Wingate, and that's kind of on the northwest side of town, uh, outside of downtown. Um, recently, we just uh, installed a, another mini roundabout in the city of McKinney at an intersection called Rock Hill and Graves. And um, as far as minis, though, they're, they're fairly new in the U.S., uh, really with, with, with respect to Texas. Uh, there are other states like Maryland and Michigan uh, that have been installing, been installing mini roundabouts for 15 to 20 years. And I, I guess it's just kind of taken some time to get here to Texas. Um, but yeah, the, the closest example would be that, that Folk and Wingate, that's F-O-C-H and Wingate. That's a more of a smaller, um, much smaller compact mini roundabout that the city of Fort Worth constructed a few years back. Uh, and then something very similar would be over there, uh, like I mentioned in McKinney at Rock Hill and Graves at that intersection. Thanks, Jay. All right. Um, if, we if we don't have any more questions, I wanted to thank you uh, for your time this evening. Um, I know that your time is very valuable. Uh, please uh, go onto our website to uh, look for the information about the, um, the community meetings that we're having about the 2022 uh, and the Tarrant County Cultural Projects. Uh, there's one this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. And then, uh, Ryan, um, once we finalize the, the, the plans showing the uh, new um, sidewalks at the, at the Miranda, but I'll share those with you. Okay, thank you. Um, Lisette, this is uh, Council Member Flores uh, jumping in. I got a couple of texts from folks who said they weren't able to get on the meeting because the link didn't work. Uh, I sent them the link and I think at least one of them uh, was able to join. Unfortunately, they missed uh, most of the uh, presentation. Is is there a way that uh, staff can field more questions uh, to TPW? I mean, I'm sorry, that TPW staff can field some of the questions of folks who could not get on the meeting uh, because of the link issues, uh, that way that they're fully informed. Absolutely. Um, I believe that the last, at the end, there's our contact information. Um, uh, this was recorded, I believe, Jeff, can you confirm? Yes, uh, this meeting has been recorded. The meeting has been recorded and um, we will upload it, you know, uh, shortly. And um, we're more than welcome to, um, you know, go through this presentation, you know, if anybody reaches out to us and they would like for us to just walk them through the presentation. Um, we, I apologize. Um, I don't know why the link didn't work, but we, we sent quite a few um, uh, mailers uh, about the meeting and um, we were hoping to have a little bit more um, response, but um, we're, we're, we're available anytime, you know, uh, Shweta will be um, going on, on maternity leave in a couple of weeks, but, you know, I'm the main point of contact and um, Derek White, he's uh, going to be um, kind of like keeping an eye on the project while Shweta is out, but I can, um, I can answer any questions or provide information to um, any of the so residents. Uh, yeah, quick question. David Mendez here. I wasn't able to get on earlier. Um, I believe it was addressed of why Bowman Roberts isn't on the master thoroughfare plan or maybe wasn't yes. addressed and yes. isn't it, developing it, it, on. A, oh, sorry. Go ahead. It, it was answered uh, a couple of times before, but um, I'm welcome to uh, talk to you about that if you if you wanted to go over that again. I would just like to know um, the master thoroughfare plan status, and is it? I, I mean, isn't it pretty much against policy to develop without a plan, without the master thoroughfare plan? That's correct. So the NTP, it's the official document. That the city, um, that the city, you know, keeps all the requirements for all of the roadways in the city for to 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 allow for future growth, and is and it, it establishes the right of way requirements for all the different type of, of of streets. Okay, so arterial streets, which are the ones that are the main roads that are um, that they carry quite a bit of commercial um, as well as residential and mixed mixed development that they can, um, they're, they're planned for 
uh, 30,000, sometimes 40,000 vehicles a day, you know, with four lane divided with possible future expansion to six lane divided. Those, those roadways um, are usually spaced at least a mile apart on the, in, in the map, and they are, they require a larger print, right, of right away. So you're looking at that some of these roads are were under the old update, you know, before we did the update, they only had like 110 foot of right away dedicated, and now the new footprint requires 130 feet of right away dedicated. Um, so, um, Bama Roberts is considered a collector street, and it has a 60 feet of right away requirement. All right. So basically, uh, you know, if, if if the roadway was going to be improved, it could be improved to like a three lane section with a center lane. Um, because that's the footprint. That's the footprint for Bauman Roberts. It, it it wouldn't qualify to be added as an arterial because if there's already arterials within a mile of distance from Bauman Roberts, the volume on Bauman Roberts is under 4,000 vehicles a day. And it also, there's quite a bit of development that is already taking place based on the footprint that it was only a 60 foot right away requirement. So if you notice, there's some sections of Bow and Roberts where the residential development took place and they they left, you know, the 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 the, the parkway or the right of way there for that future addition, but only for a 60 foot right of way requirement. So for all those reasons, um, Bow and Roberts it's not considered to be added as an arterial to the NTP. So it's, I'm not talking um, about an arterial as much, but a plan to add sidewalks as that is a well-traveled oh. road for three schools actually yes. sorry four schools um yes. a high school so. two elementaries and a middle school and they're walking on dirts and in the gutters and i realize not many people care about the section of road between wj boaz and uh Carl Marine creek um because it was annexed x number of years ago and it's just been left with forgotten sort of just like the area between um, Cromwell Marine Creek and 10 mile bridge that area has been left and forgotten. Okay, so, yes, I was just trying to respond to the comment about why wasn't the road added to the NTP as an arterial. So that was the comment that we received last time. The sidewalk, uh, uh, request, or, or it's been submitted to the city many times. I mean, I believe that the Eagle Mountain school district has had meetings with the city with leadership and that's, um, is being, um, considered right now. Uh, as part of the, you know, 2022, um, uh, we're not, package. unless yes. it's guaranteed money, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know, that's the problem is we're, we're always pushing back to the next bond. Yeah. And well, David, let, uh, this is Carlos. Uh, let me answer that. Okay. I can only account ahead, for the time that I've been on. I can only account for the time that I've been on council. I realized the disappointment when we didn't get the funding that we were looking for in the 2018 bond program. Uh, I think you and Ryan know uh, specifically my disappointment in that we've met before with City Hall. We've talked about it. I get it loud and clear uh, from this community, from this alliance, that we need more of that infrastructure built out, right? So, um, but Carlos, we, you know we, we keep really hearing about the bond, but we already know that yeah. the bond's going to be much less than anticipated because of the impact of COVID's had on the economy. Uh, that's correct. But we do, and have then they're also determining we, that the county is going to pick up a lot of that slack but there's also no guarantee in that bond because both bonds have to be passed by the voters exactly i think that most voters are very cognizant of our infrastructure needs right there is opportunity there david and i get it it's not set in stone i mean no one is saying that it is the likelihood of us getting it is better than in 2018 i can i can say that much because if you looked at and i don't know if lauren covered it but but the way these projects are ranked, they are ranked higher. That makes the probability of getting funded better. Okay, and I can't give you a guarantee, and I won't give you a guarantee because I can't back then that up. Let's 100%. not mention bond money then in these conversations. Okay. Let's just do well, it that way. Let's not mention bond money okay. because if it's we not guaranteed mention, money, and it's not a plan. I understand. Well, it is part of a plan. We have to make this prioritized list, finalize it, and submit it. I'm advocating for it. You know, it's it's recognized. The city manager gets it too because he's heard from me. And I think that the leadership at TPW get it as well. You have had meetings with them virtually. You have communicated as much. 
Keep doing that. In other words, keep the heat on, right? Don't let up, you know, keep that emphasis on the importance of this project. Your area is growing, but the infrastructure isn't growing with it. It has exactly. Yeah, I'm frustrated too. So what's okay, the plan with the bond fails? What's the plan then for okay. this area? All right. Let me let me answer it in a way, but you need to keep in mind, David, I'm only answering the question the way you posed it, right? Lauren referred to money that we had from the 2018 bond program, and you guys realized how much that was. Nine million dollars. Not enough to play with, not to the tune of thirty one million, which what we need right? We were already working on a plan to try to utilize that 9 million as much as possible and creatively as possible to fill in some of those infrastructure gaps. It would not have been a complete approach. When William Johnson came on as the TPW director, we sat down, we talked about it, he and his staff, and, and they said, really what this needs is a comprehensive approach. The only way to fund this right now is through the bond program. And I know you don't like hearing that, but if you want a complete, you want a complete solution, that's the way it has to be. So here's the problem, Carlos, is that you know this really well. We've had this conversation many times. Yeah. Is that we had a very great plan in the bond package of 2018. And that money was picked out and sent to Heritage Trace area alliance area and sent to other areas that deemed more important and so now we're at i mean i don't even know how many years we're talking about i've been here since 2006 and it's been before that so we haven't seen substantial improvements in the infrastructure in this area and we've been through three or four bond packages in that amount of time yet Alliance area is constantly improved. I mean, to the point of insane amounts of money being poured into there for facilities that aren't used. We have two fire stations that respond to a large area. And I do not want to hear that Saginaw is the backup because Saginaw responds to an area across 287 Main Street. So that yes. is Fort Worth responding to Saginaw alarms which happens more often than is reported to the city because when they do a wellness check that doesn't go on their alert because the wellness right. check and there's a lot of wellness checks happening over in saginaw because the saginaw fire department is responding to uh, calls over on blue mound road right and we're responding so, in part to that you know they're repeated just, they're, you know you understand my concern is that soon. every time you say the bond package of 2022, 2024, 2028. I mean, I'm going to Vegas in a month. I'm not guaranteeing on money I'm going to win to pay my bills. I understand. And it's the same David. thing with a bond package. We're betting no. on a bond package where you can't guarantee that bond package. So is there any plan that improves the infrastructure in this area that doesn't depend on a bond package? Again, to answer that, we, we have not made a plan per se in case the bond program doesn't come through. But as far as available dollars, you go back to that 9 million that's there. But you just said that enough. wasn't even close to enough. So what exactly. I'm asking is, I know. You is asked there me a talk of a plan? plan? No, is there sir. talks no. of a plan? Okay, no. so there's no plan at all if the bond package doesn't go? Not at this point. Gotcha. All right, that's it. But I get it, and, and we're going to keep advocating for the importance of this project. The importance has not lessened since the last bond program, right? Actually, the needs have increased. I think that they're more acute than ever, right? What I can do as a council member is continue to emphasize with staff and with the city manager that this has to go through this time. Okay, that I can guarantee. The likelihood of it going through is better than in past bond programs. But again, I can't tell you, yeah, you know, David, you can bank on this. I can't tell you that now. No one can. 
I just can't emphasize enough how much a missed bond package again would devastate this area. I hear you. I hear you 100%. Lack of investment dollars upon this uh, on part of the city. You're depending too much on developers that do not get made to pay for things. And when they right. do pay for things, that money gets used for other projects and then the money is in a shortfall. So when I right. complain to a developer that you didn't put in the roads you're supposed to, they say, I put that money into the city and the yeah. city used that on another project. They didn't keep those dollars local. Right. I so, hear you. And believe me, I know because I hear all the time about, oh, we need to keep development going. We need to make sure Fort Worth is developer friendly. No, we don't. We need developers putting dollars into if they want to develop here and useful dollars, not into right. a coffer that gets raided every time the city needs money. Yeah. And that's why we have a tiered schedule impact fee structure. I'm going to tell you the, uh, the truth. The developers aren't exactly happy with that, right? They don't like to get saddled. With the, uh, with the responsibility of paying fees that feed development. But that's what we're doing, right? It has to be shouldered, you know, also on them, not just merely on the residents and the uh, tax revenues. And, you know, I'm not against you, Carlos. I'm, I'm absolutely- No, I know, I'm, just, not, yeah. we've, I'm not taking we have, you to the such, David. We have yeah. absolutely got to have these roads improved. Yeah, I agree with they you. They need sidewalks, uh, they need roads. We cannot deal with temporary plans. We can't deal with plans that are going to be a Band-Aid. Right. Band-Aids yeah. hurt more because then they come off and there's, you know, that's what happens. You yeah. start talking about Band-Aids yeah. and then this whole place is a Band-Aid. We're getting right. pothole fix on top of pothole fix and they're coming off and the city is stretched thin on pothole repair, but there's still tons of them around. Right. I know. And so we, we got to have like solid plans. And that's why I push to keep Bowman Roberts, to put Bowman Roberts on the master thoroughfare plan. So that there's a concrete plan and it does not have to be an arterial road. It can be as is, but it needs to be on the plan and a timeline to develop that road to be sustainable to this area. I understand, David. Yeah. Uh, that's all. That's all I have. Yeah, no, you bring up good points. You know, I, you know, you and I have talked before a lot on this and, uh, you know, there's, there's not much disagreement there. I, I know. <laughs> and I got to keep <laughs> saying it and I got to keep banging that drum until it's actually done. Hey, please do so. The next time I'm in David Cook's office, maybe I'll invite you along. <laughs> do it. I'll be there. All right, David. Thanks. Thank you, Carlos. Sure. I think uh, Mr. Townsend uh, raised his hand again. Yes, I put a note in to everybody and I'll just read it to, to you because nobody's addressed it yet. Uh, is, and it may be relevant to the conversation we just ex went through is, is the master plan for WJ Boaz going to take as long as the completion of Old Decatur North and South of Longhorn which was promised to Saginaw in writing over 16 years ago. Still uncomplete. So I'm, I'm not super familiar with Old Decatur North and South of Longhorn uh, that was promised to Saginaw. I'm not sure kind of what's going on in there, but right now, so um, WJ Boaz, you know, as we've talked about, this project that we're talking about tonight is for the interim improvements and then on the 2022 bond, we've proposed, and this is our fifth ranking project um, for a four lane divided thoroughfare plan. So right now, you know, again, we haven't gotten into design with this project yet. We don't know exactly what our right of way needs are, what the permitting requirements are. Um, but right now we are anticipating a start of construction for spring of 2025. This could change. Um, but I will tell you that we are starting design this summer uh, prior to the bond being um, voted upon. So council recently has uh, allocated uh, future improvement agreement funds towards the project kickoff of 2022 bond projects so that we can get them delivered that much earlier. Well, my concern was that David was bringing up, we hear a lot of things, but we don't see a lot of things. And 
the project with Old Decatur in front of an elementary school, which has gone from a four lane down to two lanes in front of a, an elementary school on Old Decatur. And it was promised to Sagno that they would complete their part, they did, and Fort Worth was supposed to complete the rest of Old Decatur in that area. And here it is, we've been in the area over 15 years and started looking 16 years ago, and it was already in writing that that was Fort Worth's responsibility to complete that. And so the concern here is that if we're not holding up to our promises to Saginaw to finish a road that was supposed to have been finished way before now, how can we as voters and citizens take to heart all these plans when things that have already in writing been promised over 15 years ago that are, have not been completed? Your turn to answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, since uh, Lauren fielded that question, sorry, this is uh, Carlos Flores. Uh, okay. You know, Thank I, you. I, you know, that's that's before my time too, and and I am, uh, I don't have any relevant background to uh, to draw on. So I guess that would be something that TPW can look into, and probably give you more of a historical uh, context and see what exactly transpired, because I don't know. Yes, well, sir. Um, so, Ed, just make here. sure, uh, Jeff, Jeff Allen, do you have Mr. Townsend's uh, contact information so that we can get back with you? I'm sorry? If you could, uh, if you could provide uh, Jeff Allen, so he's, he's on here, he's kind of uh, pulling the strings for this WebEx, make sure that we get your contact information so that we can kind of look into that history and, and get back with you. I'll send it right now. Yeah, Mr. So yeah, if you could send it privately and uh, I I, I'll, I'll record it down. So. Right. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know Dennis Shingleton is familiar with the old Decatur problem. I know he's not going to run again, but he is familiar with that. Because I've talked to him about it. Uh, Mr. Townsend, this is Lisette Acevedo. Um, yes. Yes, and, and I am familiar with, with what with all the cater, you know, a road project. Um and I and I'm not I, I'm not certain, you know, what what why did the road um what did Fort Worth did not build the road, you know, according to how they were supposed to build it. But when when I became aware of it back in I believe it was in two thousand and ten, maybe. We we went ahead and made sure that you know we we got it built, and that's how we went ahead and got got it built from Harview Harview Hills all the way to Belly Baswell, and actually we finished the construction of that somewhere in 2014 2015. So I I am familiar with you know with that agreement, and um, like I said, I don't know what happened, but. I became aware of the issue in 2010, and then one, once I became aware of it, we, we, we got to work and we, we were able to get the road built in, I believe, 2014 to 15. The only thing, that, the only difference here is that you have a completely different group of folks and we're, we're, we're making a commitment, we're allocating the $9.8 million that the council already allocated for us to begin designing these projects as well as another almost $10 million of impact fees. So we're already committing about $90 million to try to get all of these uh, projects that are uh, well ranked and, and being identified. And we wanna begin that effort this summer. So we, we feel pretty confident. I mean, we wouldn't wanna uh, you know, uh, spend these funds if we were not uh, you know, uh, confident that we were gonna get the funds for the construction. So. We are going to begin uh, design efforts in these projects, you know, this summer. Funding right. has already been identified for that, uh, and uh, and then for the Cromwell Marine Creek, which in the 218 was was just uh, a band aid, you know, like like um, it's been mentioned before. You know, we rescoped the project and increased the budget, you know, from the nine million to 12, 12 and a half million, and we're designing the full the full roadway, the the four lane divided, you know, full roadway. Uh, and so we also are confident that you know we're spending twelve and a half million dollars designing that that 
that we're, we're going to uh, be receiving the construction dollars. So um, the city is, is making an investment already. Well, my concern was about the two sections of Old Decatur, just north and south of Longhorn, that have never been completed. Yes, the south. You're right. And the south and the portion south of Longhorn, I believe it was supposed to um, a portion of that property is still um, like not developed yet. And, and so that's why that portion on the west side of Old Decatur, you know, south of Longhorn, that corner or that section there, um, that's why it has not been um, improved. But we definitely can uh, do some research and, and being able to provide you some more information about that section. So the two lane road, so where it's two lanes in front of the elementary school doesn't give us any impetus to protect the children with a proper completion and continuation of the four lane road that goes up to about uh, 50 yards just short of the elementary school. We, we'll we'll look into you know we'll do some research and get back with you because I'm I'm very I'm really familiar with the portion north of Parkview Hills that also was two lanes for uh, 15 years the the portion that uh, north of Parkview Hills all the way to Bailey Basswell that the city finally were able to like add a half um, into 14 um, but we'll we'll certainly look into the south and into the portion south of Longhorn and get back with you. But I know that there's some some development there that it hasn't taken place yet. But my concern was for the kids at the school. So, but thank oh, you for looking into it. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> you you bet. Um, I I hope that I was able to give you some some good information. Uh, hey, even though that I don't have conversation I, started. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good place to start. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any more questions? Do we? Uh, I have. I see one more question in the chat box. Who is the best channel to route feedback to the city council members, TPW staff? Um, I believe that the the, the you can uh, send all your concerns uh, initially to Jeff um, Allen, our communication specialist, and you know TPW will uh, make sure that we get all your. Um, Concerns responded back. That way, we'll have a single point of contact that you know tracks all of the communication. And um, for the council members, I believe uh, Council uh, Member Flores that uh, um, you know he he welcomes you contact you know his office directly. Hello, this is uh, Council Member Flores. Was there a question for me? I'm sorry. No, there was a question in the chat box that what was the best way to uh, route feedback to uh, to you? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, please share my contact information, my email, uh, my office number. Uh, you know, more than happy to speak to anyone. And uh, you just want everyone to know that we are taking notes about this, okay? We are going to take your input and, and apply it, you know, to what it is that we're planning. And try to address things that may not be part of the plan right now. And we mentioned sidewalks. We're trying to incorporate that. That's uh, Ryan Smith's uh, previous point. It's not finalized yet, but uh, we're trying to finalize it, you know, again, as part of the uh, 2022 bond. Thank you so much, Council Member Flores. Do we have any other questions? Um, our contact information. Um, you know, it's available, uh, you know, show us email um, and, and myself uh, can be shared to Jeff. Uh, please don't hesitate to uh, send any comments, source questions, uh, follow ups. Jeff and we'll be able to get back with you. I want to thank everyone for your time this evening and um, wish you guys to have a good night. Thank you.
All right, guys, thank you. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.